Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Tonight, Elmira police investigating the circumstances of a deadly brawl that happened early Sunday morning. According to police, the incident happened outside of a bar and resulted in one man being stabbed to death. Big Fox's Matt Kleindienst joins us from Corning with details in tonight's top story. Good evening, and police were called to West Washington Avenue for a fight that turned deadly on Sunday morning. They're looking for anyone with information about the incident. A massive brawl involving at least 75 people turned deadly on West Washington Avenue on Sunday morning. According to police, officers were dispatched after gunshots and a stabbing were reported outside of the branch office bar. A bar employee I spoke with off camera says the incident began with an argument that spilled outside just after one in the morning. The argument quickly turned into a brawl, resulting with a man being fatally stabbed in the neck. Sporadic fighting continued as police and paramedics responded to the scene. According to police, no one was willing to provide initial information when they arrived on the scene. Names of the suspects and victim have not been released at this time. Anyone with information about the fight is asked to contact Elmira Police. Matt Kleindens, Big Fox, WYDC and Corning. SUNY has tapped a new person to serve as interim chancellor. Deborah Stanley, the outgoing president of SUNY Oswego, will take over for Jim Malatras in January. Malatras announced his resignation on December 9th, following documents being released showing him mocking an accuser of Governor Cuomo. In a statement, the SUNY Board of Trustees announced they will begin a global search for a permanent chancellor once Malatras steps down. Stanley will take over for Malatras starting on January 15th. A major drug maker says its vaccine boosters can help protect against the spread of the Omicron variant. Jonathan Sari has more from Atlanta. The Omicron variant is spreading rapidly, but there's good news on the vaccine front. Moderna releasing new data Monday showing a third dose of its COVID vaccine offers strong protection against the new strain, boosting antibodies by 83 times, enough to protect against severe illness and death in most cases. If you had a booster, if you had the vaccine, if you got over COVID and you had a, had a shot on top of it, the chances are extremely likely you're going to have a very mild case of this. Omicron has now spread to at least 46 states. It's the most contagious variant we've seen so far. It's also thought to be more mild than the original, but health officials are still trying to determine whether that's because Omicron causes less severe illness or because a higher percentage of Americans have immunity from vaccines. We ought to be careful not to extrapolate from what we've seen, but I'm hopeful that that is an indication that while incredibly contagious, this virus is maybe a bit less likely to make people really sick. We're now averaging more than 130,000 new cases every day in the U.S., the highest number since September. The new surge prompting folks across the country to reconsider their holiday plans, with cases spiking in more than two dozen states. I've had to probably shut down a Christmas Eve party I've been attending with my aunt for 45 years. And last year was canceled. So Omicron is, Omicron is not messing around. President Biden is scheduled to make a major address on Tuesday to update the country on his containment strategy. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Democrats are reeling after Senator Joe Manchin pulled his support for the president's nearly $2 trillion climate and social spending bill. The move dealt a potentially fatal blow to a key piece of the president's domestic agenda. Madeline Rivera is in Washington with reaction from lawmakers as Democrats try to find another path forward headed into 2022. Markets opened lower Monday amid concerns of Omicron and Senator Joe Manchin saying no to the House passed Build Back Better agenda over the weekend, potentially a nail in the coffin for President Biden's key domestic policy bill. If I can't go home and explain it to the people of West Virginia, I can't vote for it. And I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. Some economists are cutting their economic forecasts over the news, but Manchin is citing inflation and surging COVID cases as some of the key reasons for his opposition, concerns that several Republicans are echoing. There was so much in there that is bad, that, uh, you know, bad, bad, bad bill. Yes, there's a couple of good things that maybe we can preserve. Too much, too much of it was bad. 
Meanwhile, Democrats are blasting the moderate senator. The White House issuing a scathing statement calling the move an inexplicable reversal in his position as progressives deliver their own blows. He has continued to move the goalpost. He has never negotiated in good faith, and he is obstructing the president's agenda. Still, some lawmakers say they intend to push on. It's really about time that, you know, we take the kid gloves off and we start using them to govern for working families in this country. Senator Schumer says the Build Back Better Act will get a vote early next year so that every member can make their position known on the Senate floor, adding they'll keep voting until something gets done. In Washington, Malva Rivera, Fox News. A major global conference is being postponed because of the new COVID variant. The World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland has been called off because of surging cases of the Omicron variant of COVID. A statement from the group says, quote, current pandemic conditions make it extremely difficult to deliver a global in-person meeting. The organization based in Geneva planned to hold the event January 17th to 21st. Participants will instead join a series of sessions bringing together leaders online, and the meeting is now planned for early summer. The Elmira Prison will be featured on an upcoming episode of Great Escapes on the History Channel. This show is an eight-part series exploring real-life prison breaks and is hosted by Morgan Freeman. The episode featuring Elmira Prison will detail a daring rooftop escape by two convicted murderers. You can catch the latest episode of Great Escapes tomorrow night at 10. It's almost time to ring in the new year, 11 days and counting for 2022 to arrive, but the famous numerals to be placed atop Times Square are here. The massive seven foot tall 2022 numerals made their way to Times Square today, wrapping up a cross country trip from California. The numerals will remain on display at Times Square Plaza for a few days so people can take pictures. Then they'll be placed high above Times Square for the official ball drop to welcome 2022. A treat for travelers stuck at JFK Airport, Shake Shack is giving away free fries to people flying out of JFK whose flights are delayed or canceled. They'll need to show proof of their delayed or canceled flight at one of the chain's two to-go locations at JFK's Terminal 4. Travelers experiencing delays at other airports can snap a selfie in front of their departure gate, post it to Instagram tagging Shake Shack to receive a digital voucher for free fries. Still ahead tonight, it's one of the most extreme marathons on the planet. It was never going to be easy coming to the coldest, windiest, highest and driest continent on the planet. See how these 62 athletes conquered slick snow, fierce winds and bone chilling temperatures for this year's Antarctic Ice Marathon. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Hi everyone, welcome back. This weather forecast is being brought to you by William Matar. I'm meteorologist Monica McNeil and for Kim Walker today. Our temperatures are a few degrees uh, warmer out there today. Almost 10 degrees warmer up toward Wayland. And for Corning and Elmira, about six or seven degrees slightly warmer than it has been. Here's a look at our surface map for you. On Tuesday, we're getting ready to experience some seasonable temperatures over the next several days. It's going to be dry and chilly at times, and then we do have some moisture trying to work its way into our forecast, a weak disturbance that could produce some snow showers for us. Here's a look over the next couple of days. Our dew point temperatures are struggling and when we talk about our dew point. That's the amount of moisture that's in the air. So you can see those numbers are down in the dry and chapped category. So very limited in the way of moisture. So I'm not expecting a whole lot in the way of snow shower activity. There's a possibility we, as we continue to see increasing uh, clouds in our forecast tonight, a weak disturbance moving through could trigger a couple 
couple of light snow showers across the area. As we head toward your Tuesday morning, you can see we start out with a few clouds in place for the first part of your morning. As we move on through the day, you do see we do see a few breaks in the clouds as we head toward the afternoon. All in all, looks as though we'll see somewhat of a nice Tuesday shaping up for us with some sunshine out there. Here's a look at your temperatures for tonight. Normally, we would see lows right around 25. Our lows are a little bit warmer. We talked about that in the beginning. We're coming in at about 32 degrees. Elmira, 28 degrees. So temperatures are slightly a few degrees warmer. Tuesday planner for you, if you've got plans, coming in at about 41 degrees. That is going to be our high temperature. And again, our temperatures are very seasonable for this time of the year. And I think that's going to make it great for our work week as well as the holidays. Increasing clouds tonight, right around 28 is going to be the low. We will continue to see a win our winds out of the south and southwest at about 5 to 10. All right, let's check out that seven day weather planner for you. So a nice one on tap for us on Tuesday. We'll see mostly sunny skies. It's going to be cold out there up to 41 overnight in the upper 20s for Wednesday. Sunny, breezy highs in the upper 30s with overnight lows in the mid 20s. Now, second system coming through second half of the work week. That's going to bring us in a chance for a white Christmas. We could see a chance of snow showers for our day on Christmas. Saturday, you're looking at a high of about 44 degrees. All right, stay with us. We've got more news and weather coming up. The economic collapse of Afghanistan, a country already teetering dangerously on the edge, would have a horrendous impact on the region and the world. That dire assessment came on Sunday from speakers at a summit in Pakistan attended by leaders of dozens of Islamic countries. Jeff Paul has more. Pakistan, who pushed for the meeting, says the gathering is about the Afghan people. But its prime minister also didn't press the Taliban over the lack of women's rights in Afghanistan, saying the world needs to understand, quote, cultural sensitivities. Unless action is taken immediately, Afghanistan is heading for chaos. Any government, when it can't pay its salaries of its public servants, hospital, doctors, nurses, any government is going to collapse. But chaos suits no one. It certainly does not suit the United States. Pakistan's prime minister went on to say human rights and women's rights mean different things in different countries. His focus seems squarely on getting major world powers like the United States, to ease sanctions. Part of it would mean the release of billions of dollars worldwide in funds that were frozen after the Taliban takeover in August. And since then, the country has sunk into not only an economic crisis, but a humanitarian one as well. While the currency in the country continues to plummet, poverty levels are rising, impacting an estimated 97 percent of the population. Most families spend nearly all of the little money they have on food and are still going hungry. The Taliban's deputy foreign minister says if something doesn't change, we could see a surge of economic refugees. If the political and economic situation doesn't change in Afghanistan, there will be even more migrations, which will be a big heading and problem to our neighbors, the countries in the region, and even to Europe. So, if they want to solve this problem, it is important to work on the basic infrastructures in Afghanistan so that migrants are persuaded to return back to Afghanistan. Even if aid starts pouring in, recovery will be slow. Just a day after the Taliban announced it is resuming issuing travel documents, hundreds waited in line in the freezing cold, some overnight, just to get a passport to leave. In London, Jeff Paul, Fox News. A Christian group kidnapped while doing missionary work in Haiti is back home. The 17 missionaries were kidnapped back in October by the 400 Mawozo gang. The gang initially demanded a ransom of $17 million, or $1 million for each hostage. Officials from Christian Aid Ministries, an Ohio-based group, delivered a message today, just days after the final hostages were released. A message to the kidnappers. You cost our hostages and their families a lot of suffering. However, Jesus taught us by word and by his own example that the power of forgiving love is stronger than the hate of violent force. As Jesus 
himself was being crucified on the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. David Troyer said last week that the freed hostages appear to be doing reasonably well. Travelers aren't letting the Omicron variant ruin their holiday plans, why real estate sites are dropping crime data, and the worst company of 2021. C.J. Papa has today's business briefs. A surge in holiday travel. 6.5 million people flew between Thursday and Saturday. That's more than 2 million each day screened by the TSA. In some cases, more than double last year's numbers. It shows that despite the Omicron variant of COVID, people are committed to normal life and seeing friends and family for the holiday. The numbers are down slightly from 2019. Popular real estate websites Redfin and Realtor.com are dropping crime data from their home listings. The companies had used surveys that they feel could be racially biased. They also say the data did not speak accurately to the questions buyers have when they're inquiring about a neighborhood's safety. Redfin's chief growth officer saying people are interested in safety and not crime. And after a name change and several scandals, Facebook, now known as Meta, was crowned the 2021 worst company of the year. A social media giant receiving 50% more votes than runner-up Alibaba in Yahoo Finance's annual survey. The results following news that the company may have been targeted by seven, quote, surveillance for fire firms, potentially collecting data from about 50,000 Facebook and Instagram users. For more stories, log on to foxbusiness.com. In New York, I'm CJ Papa. Ford's electric pickup isn't even heading to dealers yet, and it's already sold out all available orders. Ford is closing reservations for its F-150 Lightning electric pickup. It's filled all 200,000 slots. It received more than 40,000 orders for the trucks in the first two days it started accepting reservations in May. Ford is now building prototypes of the F-150 and production of the models for dealers is expected to begin early next year. People with orders could start receiving the trucks in the spring. Pricing is expected to start at around $40,000 with a 230-mile cruising range. The entrepreneur behind SpaceX reveals a stratospheric number in how much he'll pay in taxes. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and CEO of Tesla Electric Cars, tweeted he'll be paying $11 billion in taxes this year. Last week, Musk and Massachusetts Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren traded barbs over taxes. Warren claimed Musk is freeloading off everyone else. Musk replied back, telling Warren to stop projecting. If correct, the payment could be larger than the GDPs of Burundi, South Sudan, and Somalia combined. Santa Claus may be busy running his workshop on the North Pole, but over on the South Pole, athletes were busy running a snow-covered marathon. Ashley Strohmeyer has the story. It's one of the most extreme races on the planet. At more than 26 miles through slick snow, fierce winds, and bone-chilling temperatures as low as negative 15 degrees, the Antarctic Ice Marathon pushes runners to their limits. It was never going to be easy coming to the coldest, windiest, highest and driest continent on the planet. 62 people from 18 countries gathered on the southernmost continent for Friday's race, channeling their inner sled dogs to glide through this stunning frozen landscape covered with towering peaks. As much as it was bru brutal, it's also maj majestic. It's so beautiful, just pristine. What a place. I don't think, I don't think I've ever been anywhere like this. I've been very fortunate to travel most of the world, but this place is special. 28 of the runners represented the USA, but the fastest person to complete the marathon was a Polish athlete, crossing the finish line with a time of three hours, 53 minutes and two seconds. So I'm very happy, so I'm very, very tired. <laughs> but yes, today is beautiful weather and beautiful race. Everything beautiful. Meanwhile, for 11 runners, this race earned them a coveted spot in the Seven Continents Marathon Club, an organization for athletes who have, as the name implies, successfully run a marathon on each of the continents. Registration for 2022's race is now open, but besides taking time to train, you'll also need time to save for the entry fee, which will run you nearly $19,000. Ashley Strohmeyer, Fox News.
put your hands to your face and get ready to scream like Kevin McAllister, there's now a Home Alone themed bar. Hidden Bar in Nashville's historic Noel Hotel is bringing back the themes of the spunky kid who gave would-be Christmas bandits trouble. The Home Alone Bar looks like the McAllister's house with snacks like Kevin's food choices, including pizza and cocktails that feature the taunting line, thirsty for more. The bar is open Wednesdays through Sundays. When you pay, tell them to keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.